Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna brace yourselves for this because this is shocking and um, I've had a lot of shocks along the way and it's gonna be shocking for you guys because you're gonna hear it all in one go. So I'm gonna try and, um, I'm gonna try and sort of soften the blow uh, for us all by by sharing that look God allowed this all to happen so as we know the kingdom of heaven was taken from the Jews and it was given to the Gentiles so when the Gentiles received God's uh, good news they unfortunately understood it in the context of their pagan religions and as uh, Christianity was first persecuted very badly very very badly by Rome they decided there's got to be a better way so they began to amalgamate Christianity with many of the original pagan rituals and pagan ways of doing things so that they avoided the persecution so what began to happen was and I'm just going to go through the series of things in the order that it happened the dates and so on what happened was um, get my phone to, to operate properly for me here, which it doesn't seem to want to okay so there was a great falling away and Paul predicted this he said there's going to be a great great falling away a great apostasy as the church sort of goes back into paganism and essentially this was happening God allowed this to happen so you know it's not like it wasn't in God's purpose um, but now just before Jesus comes it tells us in Acts 3 21 that before Jesus comes all things have to be restored and it tells us in um, oh, I think it's Matthew 17 that Elijah when he comes will restore all things so this is the work of Elijah who comes before the great and dreadful day of the Lord and it's not Elijah the person but the spirit and the power of Elijah and so I'm just going to go through really briefly some of the paganisms that entered Christianity. So this is going to be a bit of a shock, so hang on. Um, so the very first thing, as we know, we have already shared that the Sunday law was instituted in 321 AD. And this then became a part of the church in the church councils. In 325 AD at the Nicene Council, um, Easter was Replay, replaced the Passover. Now it is going to be a bit of a shock to many people to discover that Easter actually comes from the Babylonian goddess Ishtar and so Easter is not a Christian or an original um, part of the Bible but it was actually a pagan uh, festival and that is why we have bunny rabbits and we have Easter eggs because it was the worship of the fertility goddess and that might help everything to make sense but um, so they so we can still worship Jesus and worship his resurrection and um, and celebrate that but it was done at the time of Passover not at the time of Easter so um, let's go on now in 336 AD um, the uh, recognition of the birth of the sun god Tammuz was celebrated and um, made a part of the councils in what we know today as Christmas. Now I know that is going to be a big shock because it was a very big shock to me when I learned this. So Christmas is actually the worship of, of, um, of Tammuz who was one of the original Babylonian trinity. So after this in 376 we have the Pope becoming the Pontifex Maximus from the Babylonian cult. And in 381 AD, we have uh, the institution of Mary worship, almost as um, one of the Godhead. And then we have infant baptism in 416, and we have the worship of images and saints in 787, and the mass transubstantiation in 813, and then the celibacy of priests, so God didn't make us to be celibate. And that was in uh, 1,123, although Jesus did say there are some people who will be eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Um, so Jesus did say that some people will give up, you know, the, the joy of having a family for God's kingdom. Um, and then we have in 1229 
Bible reading by laymen was forbidden and so only the priests were allowed to read the Bible and then they stopped reading the Bible and then in 1229 the Pope claimed supremacy over all leaders look this can go on and on and you know it went on for 1260 years so it was it was a major um, period that we now know as the Dark Ages in 1439 the concept of purgatory became dogma and in 1545 tradition was declared equal to the Bible and so gradually the light of the beautiful truth of the good news um, began to be sort of you know tarnished or confused with a lot of these paganisms and there's many many of them that are part of our Christianity and so Elijah is sent um, just before the return of Jesus with the call to come out of Babylon and this message if we'll just quickly read um, the Elijah message which is found in Malachi chapter 4 and I will read it right now and the reason why um, we need to hear this message is because the bridegroom's coming and the bridegroom is Jesus coming in the power of the Spirit he came to deliver the slaves back in Egypt and he came in a fiery pillar and when he came he enacted just his very coming brought judgment to the Egyptians who didn't worship him and didn't cover their homes with the blood so the coming of the bridegroom is going to be a very dangerous event and we've got to get it right in other words we need to make sure that we return back to the original faith once delivered to the saints because when the bridegroom comes he's going to try everyone's work by fire that's what the Bible tells us so this is what it says in Malachi it says the day is coming that will burn as an oven and all the proud and those who do wickedly will be stubble the day that comes will burn them up says the Lord of hosts that will leave them neither root nor branch okay so I believe from my research that this connects to the coming of the bridegroom and it says but however for the people who love God to those who fear his name he will come as the son of righteousness he will arise with healing in his wings and we will go forth and grow up like calves of the stall and it says you will tread down the wicked for there will be ashes under the soles of your feet so I'm sharing this message um, the Elijah message as um, to rescue and save everybody because we don't want people going through this terrible experience we've got to come out of Babylon and we've got to understand Elijah's message so that we can be ready to meet the bridegroom. Does that all make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, I know it's a whole, whole lot of words at the moment, but it'll it'll sort of um, come together.